Hello and welcome everybody. Um, in today's session, uh, jointly between ST and Qt, we are going to talk about high-performing Qt user interfaces on the STM32 microprocessors. With us, we have Soren and Filipe from the ST, while Deepak and I are joining, uh, joining from Qt offices. And uh, we are going to explain you how to get the best out of your products and projects um, going all the way from the design to development and deploying it on the SD hardware. Without further ado, I would like to welcome to Sage Soren, uh, who is going to be talking to you a little bit about the SD MP1 portfolio. So, Soren. Thank you, Bruno, and uh, hello, everyone. I'll just take the screen sharing on my side and share my screen. And please confirm when uh, it is visible on your side. Yes, we can see your screen. Excellent, excellent. So uh, on behalf of ST, I would also like to welcome you to the webinar. Uh, my name is Soren Mikkels, and I'm a business development manager for Embedded Graphics in ST. And I'm also joined here by my colleague, uh, Philippe Pasch, uh, who's an application engineer in ST graphics team. Feel free to write any kind of questions you might have. Uh, we'll any kind of questions you might have, uh, we'll try to answer them the best way in the end of the webinar. Uh, and uh, I'd also like to inform you that we'll launch some polls during the webinar to get the uh, inputs for future development and also to see if you are still out there with us. Um, the first portion of this webinar, I'll have a short agenda here. Uh, it's covering the STM32 MPU uh, solutions we have for running embedded Linux-based graphics user interfaces. Here we'll start with uh, from entry-level graphics and end up with a product uh, which has uh, been announced but not yet uh, mass market launched. I'll come back to this. At ST, uh, we support the move or the evolution of uh, embedded HMIs, which is continuously happening. Products are getting uh, smarter, offer more features, and this also requires a smarter and richer HMI. Um, by choosing to include GUIs in your product, you get a more intuitive, safe, modern, and valuable product. At least we believe this. Uh, and I think it's important that we all remember that the UI is the face of your product. So it's a, a quite essential uh, part of it. Um, that being said, while jumping to the next uh, slide, uh, I think we should start the first poll. Uh, Eva, please uh, launch this one, and then uh, we can uh, see what it is. So uh, the target resolution, uh, what is your approximate target resolution for, for your next upcoming uh, GUI project? So please put this in. So we put some uh, standard ones, but of course there are deviations to this uh, and also some going above and, and below. Uh, uh, so if you cannot find yours there, please put in uh, one uh, which is uh, the most equivalent to what your target is. And uh, I'll just let it hang there and uh, just jump to the next slide. Let's give it uh, 10 more, 10 to 15 more seconds uh, while it's there. Great, okay. So uh, first topic, uh, okay, we actually got the results there. Okay, jumped over it. So um, as a company, you might have some, or you do uh, quite often have some requirements, high level requirements for your UI product. Uh, one could be, uh, we want to run a simple UI. Do we, then you need to ask yourself, do you really need a dedicated GPU? Uh, if you imagine that you have a, a simple background on buttons, uh, sliders, and you need to show uh, some, uh, some updated values, uh, it could be uh, temperature, for example. Um, one, one solution for this uh, as a platform could be the STM32 MP135, which were recently launched by ST. It's a Cortex uh, A7 at uh, 650 to one gigahertz. It, uh, you have a rich uh, set of connectivity, uh, Ethernet, USB 2.0 and, and so forth, and with the right level of security. But of course, the main point of this webinar is we need to talk about graphics and uh, what you can do here. So it's uh, quite capable of running a UI, but you would not find any GPU on this device, but you have the 24-bit parallel uh, display interface uh, to run uh, the, an industry standard uh, display on this kind of interface, um, and uh, 322, 40, 482, 72, and even up to 720p. But when you go up in resolution, uh, the more simple the UI need to 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 build. Uh, to, so to summarize, 
you can do nice UIs, uh, which I'll show in a, in a second, uh, a video off uh, on this MP135 with Qt. Uh, there is a board support package available for this device uh, uh, right now. And uh, you can run full color GUIs uh, by utilizing the DDR3 and the one gigahertz CPU for UI rendering. So of course you will take up some CPU cycles for, for doing this. And you can of course run the OpenSD Linux distribution uh, which, uh, beneath uh, the Qt framework. To show you the, some of the capabilities of, of this board. So we have the MP135DK. This is a discovery kit you can buy online. 482 72 in resolution and the UI here is a 24 bit pixel. Uh, and you have a, a cute UI running here with an EV charger, uh, which is uh, quite nice. So, uh, quite a short and fast video here. Uh, let me go ahead. So, uh, next up is uh, uh, could be uh, that you're saying that our requirements are a wide VGA resolution with few animations. Uh, so a step up in terms of uh, performance requirements you have and also in resolution. So these combined, uh, of course, puts uh, the requirements for the MPU and the possible GPU uh, yeah, to a higher level. So what is the next uh, natural step up in performance in uh, terms of the STM32 portfolio? Uh, it would be the MP157. Uh, this is a, uh, a dual Cortex uh, A7 up to 800 megahertz. And you, then on the side, you have a Cortex M4 for, for real time in operations. And the main graphics features, which I would just like to highlight here. So, of course, there's uh, many other features on this product. But you have a, a MIPI DSI uh, interface uh, for uh, display interface up to two lane. You have a LCD TFT controller, which you saw on the MP135. Um, and then you have, of course, a, a dedicated GPU uh, with OpenGL GL, uh, ES 2.0. Um, and then a 32-bit uh, DDR3 RAM interface at 533 megahertz. So a step up in performance. And to give you a, a, an idea of uh, the capabilities, uh, I'll show you this uh, video here. I hope it's uh, okay smooth on your side. Of course, the internet connection can uh, put a limit on the on the smoothness of, of the UI itself, but it's uh, quite smooth and doing full screen updates and animation, zooming, uh, scrolling, uh, and so forth. Um, this is an 800 480 MIPI DSi display, a four inch one, um, running Qt 5.14, I think it is. And it was implemented, implemented by KDAP, uh, this UI on top of this. Uh, this board. Uh, this is the, the dis discovery kit available from us uh, for this product. Good. All right. And uh, next up. So let's uh, take the next step here. Uh, so if you say your requirements are 720p, 1080p, and you also need to do some 2 and 3D animations. Maybe a big portion of the screen uh, could also be you need to run some uh, some uh, larger videos. And what is the most powerful STM32 MPU platform uh, we have uh, have uh, from ST? Um, so recently announced, the SM32 MP25 lines are the first of the MP2 series. Um, these microcontrollers are built around a single or dual Cortex uh, A35, uh, running up to one and a half gigahertz. And then you have on the side, again, uh, Cortex M33 core for uh, up to 400 megahertz for real time. Um, and let me just emphasize something for you. So uh, you will see a platform here capable of supporting 1080p at 60 FPS. You will also see a dedicated 3D GPU supporting OpenGL 3.1 and Vulkan. H.264 video encode and decode and at 1080p at 60 FPS and MIPI DSi four lane LVDS and RGB TFT 24-bit. So it's quite a, a step up in performance uh, you, you're seeing with the MP2 series. The DK and EVAL kit uh, will be available in 24 now. Once we have a more specific date, this will of course be announced uh, on our side. Good. So to summarize, the MP135 entry-level graphics uh, on embedded Linux 482, 72, you can also go up 720p, but again, have in mind that uh, 
it uh, depends on what kind of view are you doing. Are you doing static one? Are you doing some small animations? Or do you need some full screen updates, you know, full screen transition and so forth? Have this in mind. But you can do nice 2D graphics, RGB, TFT, uh, small animations. The step up, advanced graphics, 480p, uh, also above, 24-bit uh, uh, colors, um, two and 3D animations, RGB, TFT, and MIPI DSI display interface. And lastly, uh, but not last, the MP25 uh, series, uh, advanced 1080p graphics, uh, 720, 1080p, 24-bit uh, color, uh, two and 3D uh, full screen animations, H.264 uh, video, and uh, all the important uh, display interfaces uh, used up there for this kind of resolution. Good. Uh, please launch a poll, Eva, um, while we add it now. So uh, which of the following statements do you find true? And this is a multiple choice, so you can you can select all of them, one or two or three. Um, so one, I consider the MPU portfolio as a good platform for running any GUI. I find the STM32 MPU portfolio limited and not covering my needs. In the past, I did not consider STM32 MPUs, but with this enriched roadmap and QG integration, I find it more relevant. And lastly, I consider using Qt on STM32 in a future project. So let's leave it hanging there for some more seconds. I hope this overview behind it makes uh, sense for you and it also gives you uh, some more clear direction in, in where uh, or in which uh, kind of product you could uh, could uh, use, uh, you, the, oh, let's say combine your requirements. Uh, excellent, good. So uh, last slide uh, saying, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, for, this is my part. Uh, I'll jump over to, to, uh, to Bruno uh, now and, uh, and Deepak. And uh, while doing this, maybe we could launch uh, one more poll uh, while you would make the transfer to your display, uh, Bruno, and uh, yeah, and make this a run uh, while uh, we we'll do this. Last point for me, while uh, we transfer, uh, please launch the last poll, uh, Eva. And uh, for any technical questions you might have, um, please go to the ST community. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, page actually for it, where you are able to ask any questions. We have uh, engineers ready to ans answer any questions or go to your local ST contact. So thank you. Over to you, Bruno. Thank you very much, Soren. And speaking of questions, um, feel free to uh, uh, pose them under the Q&A section in the Zoom, so just underneath uh, uh, on, on the bottom of your screen. And we are going to come back to them at the end of the video. So <clears throat> um, you um, decided to go on one of the platforms and you, uh, you decided which is the most suitable of the boards uh, uh, that you want to use. And now it's a matter of getting your design and your ideas into reality, into first MVP, into the first prototype. So what are the challenges that you may actually uh, um, find yourselves in? Um, we are going to talk about that. Then we are going to go uh, into the workflow, how you can go from, um, uh, from the UI design and development into building this prototype and creating a backend for your application. And finally, we are going to show you uh, um, a demo that was developed for the CES this year. I'm demonstrating uh, an HVAC unit um, where it was designed and developed in Qt and put on the um, different uh, uh, hardware using boot to Qt uh, and how it was deployed and debugged. So what are the challenges you most of the companies, most of the teams face when they start developing on the embedded uh, uh, Linux devices? First is that um, when you take a look at how designers work and how the embedded engineers work, those are two completely different roles. And designers work in the tools such as Figma or Adobe tools or uh, uh, Sketch, and they need to transfer this uh, design and uh, uh, this user uh, uh, experience into the product. And you can, of course, uh, 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 either uh, developer or designers can export uh, manually different PNGs or BMPs or uh, um, um, vector format graphics, hand them over, exactly put where the locations are on X and Y axis. But this is all usually taking quite a lot of time. Um, 
finally, you will also uh, encounter most of the times trouble uh, with importing the 3D assets and um, how to get it across from designers into the developers' hands. And we're going to talk how we solve that uh, in a bit. Then, when, you come to, when it comes to creating your first prototype into testing if your application really runs uh, uh, correctly, if it looks okay, on the actual hardware. Um, if you are working with the embedded device, a device, it's quite different to when you're just testing on your uh, own machine. And it would be maybe sometimes nice if you could just one click uh, deploy uh, the application to um, your device and just see it live in action, bring it uh, uh, to your colleagues in the, uh, who are in the project management or product management, bring it to the user experience colleagues and see how uh, they like the product. Next slide, um, you will see that um, quite often we are faced with uh, um, having to create a portfolio of devices where you will have um, low end device, mid range device and high end device. And you do not really want to recreate your whole application every time for every uh, device and maintain it over the uh, over the whole life cycle, especially even uh, if you have additional uh, devices like companion apps, where you also want to retain uh, the same uh, user experience and the same code um, to run there. And finally, going from the smallest to the largest devices, maybe in the future. Uh, uh, going to something even more powerful or optim optimizing it to something even uh, with lower uh, hardware specifications, you want to be independent on the chip that you run on. So you do not really necessarily want to lock yourself in um, to a decision that you make today because things are going to change when your product comes up and maybe you're going to encounter chip shortage or something like that. So all these problems, um, are something that we as embedded engineers and designers face on a daily life, uh, in our daily lives and our daily work. And QT has actually quite a nice proposal how to solve most of these uh, problems and especially working with our colleagues from the SD. So what do we do is we have created QT Bridge and Design Studio, um, which, are, which we're going to demo to you a little bit later, which can take the design from Figma or from Adobe or from Sketch and bring it basically to the QML, to the application already that you can test it and run it on your hardware. Then um, your developers can, uh, uh, can um, use Qt Creator and Qt Framework and the additional tools for debugging and flashing to run the application, to test it in or how it actually runs on the hardware, to profile it. And then you can uh, even pass it on to the quality, uh, quality assurance um, through uh, likes of Squish uh, and Coco um, to check if the um, if things are happening really uh, how you want them to. Um, and you can really check for the actual elements and uh, inspecting the uh, the objects by property and not just by frame grabbing. And through the whole process, you can take a look at, for example, Qt Insight. Uh, which is going to show you uh, how users are using your application, um, maybe do A-B testing uh, and see in the funnels where the user interaction maybe deviates from your intended ideas. Um, so uh, the Qt Bridge is a standalone application uh, which allows you to import uh, to the assets uh, from mentioned uh, sources, uh, also 3D assets, and in some cases and some formats, you're also going to be importing the animations. And this is also where you can create your user experience and your application journey, uh, creating different states, different variants, uh, animations, and really uh, creating the application from the visual, visual perspective. This is going to uh, write uh, everything into the QML. And um, uh, if you have uh, 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 one of those, for example, STM devices, you are going to have a uh, Bootacut images already available. So uh, what we're going to show a little bit later, my colleague Deepak is going to flash um, uh, 
on the board uh, with a boot to fit image directly from Qt creator. Um, and it will show you the IP address that it runs on. And he's going to be able to like very quickly get from the design into the, uh, the prototype on the actual board so that you can immediately start working on it and checking how it works. And then you can use uh, Qt Framework and Qt Creator, uh, where you can develop uh, your applications in C++, QML, um, get really good performance, low power consumption. Um, you can interact with a lot of APIs uh, for the connectivity, for the sensors, and so on. Um, and you can also profile uh, your application and debug it real time, uh, uh, being connected directly to the device, skipping line by uh, line, uh, and uh, really seeing where the problem is. So that uh, wraps up uh, the story of from the problems to actually the solution. But this is just words. So let's maybe take a look at uh, 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 what Deepak prepared uh, 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 for us and how he's going to guide you through the whole workflow and in very few minutes uh, showing you the whole process from the start to, uh, to the end and how all every, uh, everything nicely ties with one another. So Deepak, the stage is yours. Yeah. Thanks, Bruno. So today, what we are going to look at is the HVAC demo, which we demonstrated during CES and also the Embedded World 2023. Uh, what we are trying to do here is to show you how easy it is to get started with, uh, you know, product development using the STM microprocessors using the Qt workflow. So let's start with the first process, which is the UI design and development process. Let me skip to the slide. Yeah. So in this uh, demo, you would see that we have chosen Figma as the uh, UI design tool. But then if you are not preferring Figma, you could also use other design tools. But if you're using uh, Adobe XD or Photoshop or um, yeah, other design tools, um, for example, Sketch, these four tools could be then used uh, to just export these designs directly into Design Studio. But if you also don't want to use such a tool, then you can also start your UI design directly in Design Studio itself. I'm just going to play the video. So in this video, you see that we have used Figma and the simple concepts in Figma of ellipses, lines, uh, rectangles to create some components. And then we create the you know full end screens over here. You see that these are not just static images, but components. And we use the Qt Bridge plugin, which comes with it, to export this into an intermediate format, which then can be imported in Design Studio. So in this video, uh, we would not go so detailed into the whole import process itself because there are already a lot of videos which explains this process. So let's skip to the design studio part. Before going there, we could also you know, use the advanced features of Figma. For example, uh, there is auto layouts uh, feature, which could then be converted into its equivalent format in QML, which is like Angus. Or we could also use the variance uh, you know, feature of Figma, then which would then be converted into states of Design Studio. Let's move ahead to Design Studio. So in the design studio, you see that we have kind of imported all these designs uh, into design studio from the asset import option. And you see this UI.QML, which is basically a pixel perfect import from Figma. You could also see that we could uh, import 3D elements, 3D assets or models from tools like Blender or Maya. And there is also a 3D editor, which helps you to browse around this 3D model. You can actually change the light source, the camera source to uh, produce cool effects over here. Now, the next step is to see how this runs on the desktop. So I'm just going to run this project here and see if all uh, my expected animations are running fine here. So you see the 3D model here, which is rendered on the desktop. I would also check by going into the other screens and seeing if the animations are working properly. Yeah, so all of them are working properly. What you also see uh, is the capabilities of Design Studio to create animations, uh, state management, and even if you can use advanced features like uh, shaders, cute cute effect makers and also profile your application using the features of Design Studio. 
So the next step is to see how this looks like on a real device. So that is where the boot to Qt comes into picture. To get started with boot to Qt, first of all, you need to have an installation. So I'll walk you through how to get this installed. The first option is to go to your maintenance tool, uh, log into your commercial Qt account. So once you go there, you would find the option for both the boot to Qt stack. So uh, it is available directly under 6.5.1. So you browse uh, a bit below, you see the MP15 discovery and evaluation kits. You just select next and this would be installed. The second option is to head to your accounts of Qt and in there, click on the downloads and you would find this under the QBSP option and you then go ahead and select the Qt version that you want to work with. I choose 6.3.2, you choose the host where you want to work with and then this would show you the list of devices. You download the QBSP image that you want and then head back to the maintenance tool where you can check if this is available under any of these Qt versions. If not, you can just go to the browse QBSP files and select this file and next. And this would basically install the QBSP package as well over here. Now, what is boot to Qt? So to explain it in a in a advanced fashion, so basically the boot to Qt has mainly three features uh, or three components to say. The first thing is that it has an embedded Linux, Yocto-based embedded Linux image, which then could be flashed onto these devices of 135 or 157. And this also includes a cross compiler uh, tool chain that you could use to put in, create images for this device. It also includes uh, integration with the Qt creator. And we are going to see how it is integrated with the Qt creator now. So you head to the edit preferences and you would see the different kits available. And you see that already 6.5.1 and 6.3.2 is available under the section. Now, the next point is about flashing this. So under the tools, you can just go and select flash option and you would need to insert a USB or an SD card. In this case, I insert an SD card, choose the proper boot to Qt image, click on next. And this creates an image onto the SD card, which when completed, I plug it onto the device and then it starts like this. So this is the boot to Qt image. You have multiple options here to get connectivity either through a LAN cable or a Wi-Fi network. So what is left now is to actually uh, being able to do the prototyping uh, even at the design phase without any C++ code available at this point. So um, this helps you to even understand how the independent UI is going to behave. Is there any performance issue or is there any phone which is not uh, you know, rendered properly on this particular screen? <clears throat> so that's that advantage that you get by trying out these designs at the design phase directly onto the boot to device. So you see, I head back to the design studio. Inside the design studio, I have the option to select the different kits. So you see, I can choose a desktop or a boot to Qt device. So I then head to the edit preferences and here I can basically add a new device. So I added a device called stm 32 mp 157 I can give the IP address so that it is able to communicate with this device. So once this is done, basically I make sure that the boot to Qt device is the selected uh, kit for this particular uh, QML project and I click on run. So you see the assets are now then copied onto the device and you would see the design already running on it at this point. So this is where I would use it to check whether all the transitions are pro was, uh, proper, uh, if the fonts are rendered properly and all that stuff. The next part is basically building the project, deploying and debugging issues on it. So we are still at the design studio. So you have a whole bunch of QML files. Uh, now, now we have to pass this smoothly to the developer. So we have an option within the design studio to basically make a CMake 
code-based project out of the SQML project so that the developers can start working on it. And when you click on this uh, option, what happens is it creates a main.cpp and creates all the cmakelist.txt in different hierarchies of the project, it includes all the QML files so that it is able to compile out of the box with Qt Creator. So you see, I go to file and then export project, generate CMake build files and click on OK. And so this would have created all the necessary files required for compilation. Now I head back to the Qt Creator where as a developer, I'm going to check whether uh, I have configured everything properly. So I'm going to add a device, which is a boot Qt device. I enter the IP address so that I can talk to it. The important thing also to check is whether you have mapped the kit with this particular device. So that's what I'm gonna do. I head to the kit and I'm gonna map this kit to this particular device. So once this is done, I can start loading the cmakelist.txt, which is the format supported with Qt6. So once you load this, it's going to parse the cmake file uh, and look for errors. So here I have to check which all kits I need to select. So you can choose Android, desktop. In this case, I'm choosing the boot Qt kit and it goes through the CMake and finds that everything is fine and it is ready to build. So we go ahead and build it. So once the build is done, what is left is to deploy it onto the device. And that is exactly what we're doing right now. So we clicked on the deploy, it's able to put it directly onto the device. So the difference from the last time and this time is that now it's actually a complete application an executable, which is going to run on the device. So you see, yeah, it uh, flashed or it started the application. And now I'm going to just play around with the user interface. So I'm checking the different uh, implementations, which we had. We tried to move around the 3D, it's working fine. I tried to change the temperature and it crashed. So you, had a, you have a bug already and now we have to start debugging it. In Qt Creator, we already have the debugger as a you know integrated product. So you can try to debug the application and reproduce the same scenario. And then you would see that, hey, there is a bug or there's a crash. In this case, it was a segmentation fault, and then it would tell you where exactly it failed. So it's just like the GDB, but then integrated into the Qt Creator. Now you can just uh, do, uh, you know, check the values of the different variables, whether it is proper at this point of time. And with some debugging, we were able to understand that, hey, there was an issue that this MQTT manager itself was not initialized. So we go back and fix this issue and then we try to rebuild it and run it again. I go back uh, with the testing and go through the same sequence. Everything is working fine. I tried to change temperature. Now it works fine. So one bug is solved. There could be more bugs. So we are trying to navigate through the whole system. This is a 3D part. So if you had seen this part, so these are the 3D models that we imported from Blender. And when you click on this, it's changing the layout. So you can actually do much more with it. Uh, for example, if you kind of like change the temperature, you can change the light source of this 3D object so that the room changes its color from red to blue. So there's a lot of possibilities that you could do with the 3D and this is running on the STM32157. I just go back to the other screens and see if all the animations are fine. Yeah, it seems to be working fine, all good. So now it is time to check the same implementation on a different product portfolio. And this is the STM32 MP135. So as you uh, as you have noticed, this doesn't have a GPU. So with QML, we basically uh, could use the same QML so that it understands if there's a, a you know three uh, graphics accelerated backend, and if yes, it's going to use that. But in this case, it doesn't have a GPU, so it's going to use a CPU for the rendering of the artifacts. And we also have replaced the artifacts of this project 
with some images uh, instead of the 3D part so that everything works smooth. So you see that image, the 3D part is now, uh, you know, replaced with static images. But apart from that, you see the performance is up to par with what we saw in the 157 as well. The features are working fine. The animations are cool. So we now go to the other screen and see if everything is also equivalently smooth over here. Yeah, this also appears to be smooth. And let's also check one other animation in the home screen and the settings. Yeah, okay, let's see how this works. Yeah, this is also smooth. So yeah, so basically what we demonstrated right now is the capability to use the same code and write it for different product portfolios, one as a low-end portfolio, one as a high-end portfolio. I hand over to you, Bruno, for the rest of the slides. Yes, thank you very much for this uh, short rundown um, through, the, uh, through the presentation. Yeah, so as you saw, it was very easy um, to get your designs onto the hardware um, and to really um, utilize the possibility this, uh, that uh, MP1 series from the ST provides. Um, you can easily uh, prototype uh, and create uh, uh, designs that you can really check if they're working uh, uh, using Design Studio. Then you can uh, put it into Qt Creator, create backend uh, services, cre create the backbone of your application, run it, debug it, test it. And it is all possible uh, uh, on all the, uh, all the targets uh, ranging from the low end to the high end devices. And Qt offers a long term commitment to supporting the ST MP1 uh, targets in the uh, future, uh, future um, with BSPs and all the releases that Qt is going to offer. In terms of the release schedule, Qt is releasing a new version. Uh, kind of every year, and uh, some of the uh, the releases are marked as a long-term support, which have a support for uh, uh, roughly three-year cycles. So it means that you're going to, if you choose uh, um, a version now, um, you're going to be receiving uh, fixes and security updates for the whole next uh, uh, three years without uh, uh, having to worry about any kind of I, uh, API changes and in terms of Qt, all the Qt6 are binary uh, libraries are binary, binary compatible between one another. In terms of the new features that were introduced with Qt 6.5, uh, there was, uh, um, uh, there, uh, the libraries are now available uh, directly on Debian. So uh, uh, what you can do is you can immediately uh, try to run it on one of your favorite distributions. Uh, we introduced Qt effects and an effect maker, so you can um, simulate uh, different particles and effects uh, in the 3D and 2D spaces. Um, we have added connectivity through the uh, gRPC, protobuf, and CAN, so you can easily inspect the messages and objects. Um, and those are marked as a test preview um, in the current version, and we're probably going to be propagated in a uh, fully supported versions in the next releases of Qt. And finally, you can uh, see uh, Qt location and map view. So in case you have use cases where um, where you need to show the map, you need to do the map interaction with zooming, when, with panning the map, with creating uh, uh, points of interest, uh, points on the map, you can all do it out of the box uh, using the tools that you have directly in the Qt. No need to bring in big other APIs and break your head how this is going to be implemented. Yeah, that would be all. Um, and uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to this part. Um, we will have, we have another poll, um, which will may be um, uh, interested in learning in which of the devices would you maybe be interested in? There are also some uh, um, some uh, devices which are microcontrollers uh, here mentioned in the list. So uh, feel free to uh, fill it up and uh, tell us what your uh, what are your thoughts on um, the next hardware targets. Um, also, uh, feel free to ask the questions in the Q and A. We have already a few questions, and we are going to be answering them um, kind of right now. 
So, uh, Dmitry uh, asks um, if we are going to share a live video of the event. Yes, it's going to be available in the Qt uh, resources uh, part, so you can just uh, put this into your favorite search engine, and uh, in a few days it's going to be available uh, there. Um, there's an anonymous attendee um, who is asking, what if I prefer uh, to use boot to Qt Linux? Are there any advantages for using OpenSD instead? Um, it would, it's nice if you prefer boot to Qt, but you can also use the uh, OpenSD. Maybe, Philip, uh, you can tell me a little bit more about uh, the OpenSD. Yeah, I mean, um, with the uh, QBSP, you have the, the advantage to, uh, to have a an already compiled image, so you don't have to uh, to launch uh, uh, a big uh, distribution uh, compilation. So it's uh, much easier to uh, much easier to um, to use this uh, QBSP. You also get the uh, the advantage to uh, to have a cute creator environment setup that is ready uh, to use, and you also get the benefit of uh, using the uh, six point five release. For the um, OpenST Linux distribution today, it's uh, on a 5.15 release. So uh, it's uh, one, uh, one, uh, one limitation. You don't have all the APIs that could be uh, available for uh, with the 6.5 uh, release. In a few months, we will uh, also deliver a, a new uh, X Linux package of uh, the uh, ST Linux distribution for dedicated for Qt uh, on MP2. So uh, we will have the, uh, um, a much easier setup uh, for, for debugging and launching uh, application with uh, Qt uh, pre creator. But it will be still on a 5.15 release. Okay, thank you very much for the info, Philip. So the next question uh, is from Nicholas um, um, asking, what is the pricing of QT? Um, is it royalty based or uh, there is a license? Um, so QT uh, has a dual licensing model. Um, basically, it is covered under the GPMV3 or using the commercial license. I, to, uh, to be honest, I do not know the prices exactly. Um, but in case of device creation, if you are shipping the devices, there is a, a bit of a royalty. And in uh, terms of the, um, the license, there are possibilities uh, for different uh, uh, licenses with device creation, or if you're just creating an uh, application that you can run, for example, on your phone or your, um, uh, or your PC, or even just for the designers. So it's um, something customizable and that is tailored uh, always up to the customer. So um, I would encourage you to, um, if you're interested in that topic, to reach to uh, us and we are going to connect you to one of our account managers who is going to be taking a look at your case and uh, coming to you with a quote or more information if you may need. Next question comes another from Anonymous um, and testing a boot to Qt on the MP157. Um, and there were some frame drops. What could be the issue? Um, maybe, Philippe, you can take uh, that one. Yeah, if you can yeah. we had an issue with the very last 6.5.1 uh, with uh, some performance uh, or some visual artifact. We are debugging this, so uh, it will be uh, corrected uh, as soon as we can. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, we, uh, we will fix the problem. I would encourage you to uh, go to the community and to uh, the STM32 MPU space and then the, the graphic space and then put in uh, maybe more uh, detailed what your uh, uh, what the issue is and uh, what you're experiencing and then we can maybe try and help you and also discover uh, uh, maybe some other th things to optimize. Uh, yeah, and this goes for everyone. Uh, yeah. Just another point, uh, some of the polls were, were, were done uh, and we got a lot of answers from me and you and, and thank you very much for this. Uh, we also saw some of, a lot of you are targeting 720p and 1080p, that's, that's cool. Uh, and uh, really a high resolution. Um, 
if you are targeting this kind of resolution, I urge or to or I encourage you to get in contact with your local SG representative or, or with Qt and uh, and uh, then we can um, can disclose more information directly to you uh, as a, a possible ST or already ST customer on the MP25 uh, product. Uh, yeah. Okay, so maybe I have a question for you as well, uh, Soren. Um, what is, for example, the maximum resolution that I could run from the uh, MP135 if um, I wanted to, for example, connect it to some, some larger screen? Yeah, we Do talked a bit about this earlier, so uh, it's not a, a one-line question. Uh, so there are so many uh, ingredients uh, to defining what kind of resolution uh, or and kind of UI you are able to do on, on, on XY platform. So um, if you take into consideration the, the resolution itself, if you just has, have a white background, uh, it's quite easy to draw. Uh, it doesn't uh, require that many, uh, uh, let's say, uh, rendering uh, cycles or, uh, or GPU uh, um, features, then it's quite fast and easy to do. Then you add some buttons, some sliders and text, that's also fine. But once you start to do more uh, more uh, animations uh, requiring more GPU resources or CPU resources, uh, scaling, rotation, full screen updates, and so forth, that means you have uh, less uh, render time uh, and, and less time to uh, to do the update to the to the display. So it's always a trade off. Um, so the MP135, for example, could go much higher resolution than uh, the 482, 72, and 800 and 480. Um, if you do a very static UI, uh, but again, uh, it's very dependent on what, what kind of UI you're doing. Uh, and I can also imagine uh, you, Bruno, and Deepak, you also have many customers where they, uh, they have a platform and they develop the UI and they have some performance uh, issues because sometimes you do overshoot uh, what the designers are aiming for. And then you as an engineer needs to, uh, to figure it out how to solve it. Uh, uh, so yeah, so it, it is not straightforward. Uh, uh, to to do it. Okay, I mean everything depends on the, your uh, use case. Um, so with the next question from Andre, uh, maybe Deepak, do you want to take that one uh, over? Yeah, definitely, no issues. So the question is whether there's an additional fee for using the Qt Bridge if you already have a commercial license. So basically it depends on what kind of commercial license you have. Uh, so there's a development portfolio where you can either have an application development uh, professional or enterprise or device creation professional enterprise. So with all the different commercial offerings from Qt, what you get uh, is a design studio professional, but this does not include the bridge. So if you want to use the bridge, so there should be a separate purchase of Design Studio Enterprise. So this includes uh, uh, features like uh, the bridges for all the different applications and some external pub plugins as well. Yeah. So and you can always um, talk to uh, one of our account managers who are going to um, describe a little bit more about that. Um, that being uh, the last question, I would like to thank you for your attendance um, and i um, very happy to uh, have you here. Um, so feel free to uh, reach to either of us uh, when you're developing your next projects and new ideas, uh, bringing it to the implementation, and we are going to be there uh, to support you. Thank you very much and have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.